Um, so first off, Corey, I wanted to ask you, you know, since um, you're a person of faith who is in the industry, did playing this role of Sam have any sort of parallels with your own experience in the industry? Like, you know, kind of like keeping that faith, but also dealing with it, like, you know, a lot of real things that go on in Hollywood. Absolutely. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> this business is really hard, mm -hmm. and my love for the music and my passion for the art outweighs any stress that comes from it. And I definitely need God to ground me and to keep me centered and remind me that it's bigger than myself, mm -hmm. and that it doesn't really matter about the glitz and glam, but it's about what you can do for others with your gift and what message you can use as healing. And that's why I really love being a part of this film because yes, it's funny. Yes, you see some of your favorite people in the movie, but the deeper core rooted message is also about, it's okay to not have all of your stuff together. Mm -hmm. You just have to give yourself grace on the journey mm -hmm. and allow, allow yourself some grace. I lost mm -hmm. my train of thought, but no, yeah. that's definitely what what the film's about, and that's why I loved being a part of it. Yes, yes. And Angelica, for you, you know, I loved your character so much because as an only child myself, I got super excited when <laughs> my cousins would come around. Like, I mean, I like I like being an only child, but I also like being able to like have my space. And like, you know, it's like having siblings; we can get rid of them when you want to when you have first right. cousins. Right. Right. Um, so, what was it like building this chemistry um, and like have, playing this character who's like very quirky, but also has like a mindset of like what she wants to accomplish as well. Mm -hmm. She's like quirky with ambition. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, a lot of fun, you know, I think playing like multi, faceted characters, mm -hmm. which I think we all are as mm -hmm. human beings, right? But I think when we really get to like show m different sides of characters in one role is really special. So I'm grateful that Jess, as she was as a person, was really, optimistic and quirky and awkward and doesn't take social cues, but also she was on a mission. You know what I mean? <laughs> she was on a mission and she was like, I am going to win this by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. um, and the moment that Sam mm -hmm. came into her life, I don't even think, just didn't assume anything of it until she heard her sing. And then she, that's when she had the whole, you know, realization. Mm -hmm. And so it's just really special and I'm really excited that I got to do it. Yes, yes. <laughs> And this movie, of course, you know, mixes these, you know, contemporary, you know, R&B, hip hop music and has like these gospel lyrics. Is there any like song that wasn't kind of remixed for this film that you wish was? Like a song that's out now that you think would be perfect with like some gospel lyrics. What would that song be? Definitely Jesus Walks by Kanye. Ooh. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Flip the whole like yes. the reg, yeah. Uh -huh. And God willing, if there's a two, I would love for us to sing Take Me to the King. Take me Ooh. to the king. <laughs> That's one yes. of my favorites. Classic, classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. What about you? You know what? If there was a way we could flip, <laughs> you know, like a Lizzo song. Oh, I just, that'll be easy. I love like just the the beat and the sound of a lot of her music. Mm -hmm. And so I would love to do have that same energy, mm -hmm. but sing about the Lord. Special. You can yeah, special. Say, you can that would be so special. easy. Well, you know, thematically, Lizzo's music is kind of like about empowerment yes. anyway. So I feel like that right. would be kind of easier to Yeah, live. I was thinking about about damn time, but same way. <laughs> yes. Oh, about, is that a bad word? It would work. Oh. We could we could finesse it. <laughs> yeah. We could finesse it, and special wouldn't need that much finessing. Right. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you both so, so much for your time. I can't wait for more people to watch this film. Um, Chloe and Angelica have been talking about all day how you just really took the prep for this movie seriously, like the choreography, <laughs> yeah. you know, the gospel music. So what was it like being in, like, this boot camp yeah. to, uh, to prepare for this It was role? definitely new. Like, honestly, being around some of these professional dancers, I heard some of them was dancing for Chris Brown and Beyonce. I'm like, <laughs> I, what I'm finna be doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, what moves y'all finna be teaching me? So, nah, it was it was fun though. We had a, we had a lot of good people that would come every single day and like teach us all this choreography while we're trying to learn our lines and be on set at the same time. They yeah. they're walking us through the steps and everything. So, it was definitely a great experience um, learning something so new. You know, mm -hmm. I've always had rhythm, but like, you, you <laughs> Not know, like that. yeah, nothing like how we was doing though. Yeah. I just hit the Dougie a little bit at times. You know? that's, that's my go-to. I mean, Andy, Andy was incorporated, you know, in this movie as well. Like, yeah, yeah, I thought that's like your signature. Yeah, so. that's that's my go-to, man. You know, I've been doing that for years now. Yeah. And 
you know, this movie is your, you know, I guess your biggest film or TV role mm -hmm. um, so far. So why do you think this was like the perfect opportunity for you to like make this big splash into to acting with this movie? Um, it was a good, like when I read the script, it was a great family movie. I had the right people involved. I was a fan of Will Packer and other movies that Tina Gordon had done to date, you know. Um, Everything, all the stars are lined up, man. I think I just knew this would be a great opportunity. I have a good intuition, so <laughs> I picked, you know, I always know what to do and what not to do, so. Yeah, we hope the world receives it the same way, though. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people who, you know, may have, you know, be be popular on social media mm -hmm. may, you know, look to you as like, hey, this is the kind of thing I want to do. I want to be on this app or like, right. I want to do be on this platform right, right, right. and like, this could be what's at next. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest misconception about translating that social media fame to a big project like this? Um, like misconception, you saying like, as in like, what do you feel like people yeah, what, don't like, what, see? Yeah, what people may not see or be surprised about as mm -hmm. far as that transition? Oh, uh, um, I mean, it's not easy, I'll tell you that. It's, it's definitely very different because everything is short form nowadays with social media, you know? So, uh, yeah, this is definitely different from that. Just learning lines and stuff, you don't really have to learn lines with any content that you do on social media. That's, you know, memory skills. You're using all different yeah. types of skills and acting just in general is very different from online going to the big screen so there's a, there's a lot of different things that you know which is which is why you know people from social media are still learning to how to make that transition you know yeah. is there's very early on apps where people would try to make the transition from like vine days yeah. and like early youtube days you know yeah. and it's still going on so i'm learning from what the mistakes that the people before me made, you know. And what was it like creating chemistry um, on the mm -hmm. set? You know, we kind of saw that you and Chloe developed this rapport, you know, being her music video and things like that, you know, while yeah. this was being filmed. Um, so what was your favorite part about, you know, bonding with your cast members here? Uh, everybody was just, everybody, man, you know when black people get together, <laughs> we, we, hey, we used to be wild. So honestly, I hope they show a lot of like the behind the scenes bloopers. I, even if they roll them in the credits, it would yeah. be funny. Cause we got so many funny behind the scenes moments, just being in the green room or in the trailers, like, yeah, those, I, I had so much fun with all the different cast members and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. I can't thank wait you. for everyone to see this film. The, the interesting dynamic here is that it's set in like what you would feel like, you know, the, the church, but it kind of has this contemporary element yes. of being in like these younger skewing, like kind of mega, pseudo mega church types yes. that like we see in this film. So what was the, I guess, the purpose in like having it like that sort of setting as opposed to kind of films, other films in this vein have kind of been you know, like, you know, like down south, you know, yes. this film is in Atlanta, but it's like, it's not down south. It's not like a, a church in a town with like a, a one stop light. This is kind of like very, you know, contemporary in that aspect. Well, it's funny because uh, the, the, the original script was set in exactly that. Mm -hmm. Small town, uh, you know, this amazing singer comes to the small town. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the, I don't want to say fights, but certainly conversations that I had to keep having that we've already made amazing versions of those movies, like yeah. amazing versions of them. So if we're going to tell this story, it should reflect where church is right now. Mm -hmm. It should re be for this generation. So mm -hmm. a lot of the choices in terms of casting, definitely location, mm -hmm. definitely the locations of the churches and their personalities is meant to be specific to now, mm -hmm. be different from uh, previous films, and also raise the stakes of the performances. I did not want to tell a story where Chloe Bailey comes and can sing better than everyone forever, and and just everybody's like, oh my gosh, this uh -huh. person's amazing. I wanted th the character of Sam to come into a, a real church world, which is these are powerhouse singers mm -hmm. in Atlanta and in a lot of churches in this country. These voices, I wanted to be real about it, which yeah. is that some of our best singers have come out of the church, right? And these great singers still exist in churches. So it raised the music level of the whole performance by A, setting it in, in a city. It also gave me access to having a character like Sam yeah. go hang out at clubs, go hang out with uh, at a rap icon's house mm -hmm. because that's more real to hear. Yeah. And so that was one of the first things I did was change it to 
uh, the city. You know, first of all, when you bring up Fighting Temptations, what's interesting is that this is a full circle moment for Chloe Bailey. Mm -hmm. So Chloe Bailey played young Beyonce yeah. in Fighting Temptations. Yes. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Now she has her own movie where she, of course, is the lead. And that actually takes me to your question, which is a lot of times you do see these movies and it is, you know, it can be a little tropey. It's the person who comes into the small town with the big voice and then what happens when they switch things around and flip it on his head. Yeah. With this one, we wanted to bring her into a world that already existed, the world of competitive praise teams. And it happens in real life in cities like Atlanta. Yeah. And there are major competitions that happen and we wanted the Chloe Bailey character to come into a world, not where she came in and influenced it, but where the world influenced her. Because this is a movie where we wanted to have this character find her voice along the way. She knows she can sing, she knows she's into secular music, she has these amazing ambitions, but she's lost her faith. She yeah. doesn't have a relationship with God. She doesn't have a, a good grasp on her own spirituality. And that's something that we wanted to do. And the way into that is the music. We knew to get people to care about this muse, this story, and this movie, we needed an entry point for them. So we bring you in with the Beyonce, Cardi B, <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion mashup over, you know, some gospel lyrics. Uh -huh. But then you stay and you see this journey of this young woman trying to find her faith. Yes. And this is the latest in multiple collaborations between you and Tina Gordon. Yeah. Um, I know that this, you know, came about, you know, when she was doing Little. Um, how do you think this film is like the na just a natural progression of the collaborations that have happened between you two over the years? Oh, I, first of all, I love Tina Gordon. She is somebody that truly understands how to weave a narrative within an entertaining movie. So she's somebody that does really well with comedy. This is a movie that is about praise teams, but you have those comedic elements that give it levity and give yeah. it light while dealing with some serious issues. And then she knows how to make sure that she keeps an eye on the, the narrative wall, so to speak, if you will. She mm -hmm. knows how to make sure that the story she's telling doesn't get lost in all the bigness of the music and the set pieces. That's what I love about Tina. She's an amazing collaborator. I like working with her. When we were doing the little project together with Issa Rae and Marce Martin and, uh, and Regina Hall, we talked about what else can we do together. And I got pitched this project by an amazing young executive named Antoine Jenkins who said, let's do a movie about the praise team world. I grew up in the church. I immediately was like, I love movies about that world. How do we tell it so that folks that know nothing about the church, folks that may or may not have ever been a part of a praise team or know what it is would still be interested in this movie. Yeah. Tina was the right person to do that because she knows how to handle all those elements at yeah. once. And like I said, it's an entry point for everything. Like any person that watches this film, there's some point that they can like have like, okay, I can relate to this or like, you know, I've experienced this. I think that's the, the great part about this movie. I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> yes. That was the goal for sure. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for your time and I cannot wait for more people to watch it. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's actually borrowing from real contemporary preachers like there's a real PG mm -hmm. he's a, he's sort of a combination of several preachers that I know uh, real Natalie uh, even a, a champion life uh, played by Mike <laughs> Bless. <laughs> uh, um, they're all real they're all based on inspired by yes yeah and this is the latest in multiple collaborations you've had with Will Packer yes. why was this type of film kind of like the next direction um, I, I know that this kind of came about as you're working on little yes um, so why did this seem like a natural progression in like the collaborations between I wanted to do a musical and um, he was toying with this idea and this script and um, it was just at that stage where we we're just trying to figure out why this movie, why we should make it. I just looked at it just to give my impressions about like how to move this project forward, what it should say. And, and then he was like, well, you should just direct it. <laughs> and I was like, it's probably a good idea. <laughs> so I love collaborating with him. We have the same sensibility. Um, we just, we get along. It's, it's, um, I'm, I'm very, very grateful that uh, eventually he called to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much. I really enjoyed this conversation. I cannot wait for more people to see this film. Oh, I appreciate uh, it. Yes, thank you. <laughs>